G'day everybody, Duckville here. We're going to do something a little bit different here today. This is actually a rep from uh, DreamHack Valencia, which just happened a couple of weeks back. And thank you to the uh, peeps at DreamHack for, for letting these uh, reps f go free on the internet. Is uh, pretty pretty much, I think it was a week or so afterwards. That's uh, quite nice of them to let those all go. And obviously the players who competed there, we had uh, a lot of awesome players at this particular event. Uh, this particular game, in fact, is going to be featuring Liquid Hero, as we can see down here in the blue on the southern position on Metalopolis. And his opponent up here in the red is EG Hydra. Now, um, just before I get on to some other random rantings, um, this particular game, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have a look at a match from the player's perspective. Now, this is going to be a first-person game, uh, sorry, a first-person perspective game, so we're not going to be looking at Hydra's view. We're going to be focusing purely on Liquid Hero, and uh, this is obviously just something I've just sort of come up with recently. I have uh, been a bit quiet on the casting, but um, hopefully this particular style will actually be a bit of fun. We can have a look at how the, pro, uh, how the pros actually play the game like directly themselves as opposed to just a normal style of cast and uh, yeah if you guys have any feedback for this particular style if you if you like it let me know if you don't like it let me know and uh, we'll probably just uh, throw it in the bin and never do it again but um, hopefully it's a bit of fun and we'll see that uh, coming up soon now of course uh, as we can see from Hero here he is starting out with a forge expand although it looks as if he does spot that the uh, the spawning pool here is actually gone up has actually gone up already for Hydra, so he's actually going to go for a, looks to be a no gas expansion. Now that's the thing that Hero was just looking for, it is really hard to follow what he's doing sometimes, because he is so incredibly quick. Um, but um, he did cancel the forge on seeing that the spawning pool was there already, because it means that he is uh, not going to have any trouble from uh, fast lings or anything like that in the initial stages stages of the game. And it's a lot easier to hold off a uh, any any sorts of ling attacks when they are the slow lings, and of course when you have that nexus going up pretty quickly. Now, um, before we get too far into the game, as we can see, um, Hero just bouncing around with that probe, trying to deny the expansion from going up here. We'll see, perhaps he might put a pylon down, really spending a lot of time there, focusing on getting that uh, delay done there, but he is able to uh, just push the drone back and it will now come back in. But before we get too far into that, he's going crazy at the moment. But um, so big thank you to 2Cube, uh, he's uh, the uh, person who has actually made that little intro, which you probably will have seen at the start of this video. It's uh, very cool, I've sort of been looking for something like that for a little while. Um, obviously we'll see, uh, perhaps we'll get some, uh, like, you know, sort of evolve that over time. And uh, But yeah, big thank you to 2Cube, you can find him at 2Cube on Twitter. Um, and also, um, I had an, another thank you actually to a lot of the new, uh, a lot of the new subscribers on the channel. Um, you guys have been saying a lot of really nice things. Thank you very much for your support, and uh, I'm hoping that we can keep that, uh, keep up the uh, lots of casts coming in, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy any more content that comes through. Now, speaking of content, what have we got here up the top left-hand side? You ask. That is actually the spending tab. This is actually something which. Uh, I rarely use because normally it's not really something which you really want to see in a game because it just sort of it's very static information that sort of just displays how much people are actually using um, on particular buildings and the units of course. Now the reason we're using this in this game is because we really want to focus on what Hero is doing, how he's responding and to what he can see. Now if I put the produc production tab up, obviously you guys see, you can see exactly what Idris is doing and you know, we could sort of, uh, we could sort of have a guess of what uh, Hero is going to do in response to that. But um, with the spending tab, we can just sort of see general information on what these guys are spending up on. Now, speaking of the spending, here we go with uh, a Twilight Council here from Hero. So he's going to perhaps look to do some blink play pretty quickly there, or perhaps move into DTs. I'd be a bit surprised if it's DTs. Oh, there we go. He does get a, a third assimilator up down. Uh, up down up at the uh, the natural expansion there probably can't really do it as easily with the two gas it is obviously a lot easier to get DTs going when you have a third and potentially a fourth gas going as well so he does go for that currently with the uh, he's doing a good job with his probes at the moment we'll just have a quick peek at the uh, income tab we've got Hero currently sitting on 27 probes to the 29 harvesters of Hydra of course one uh, very strong with droning of course is Hydra he's uh, always doing a big bang up job of getting a lot of probes now that probe 
a uh, lot of drones and the probe that we saw from Hero did spot the third base he's sending over a Zeller to harass that third not going to let that get up without uh, without a fight and in fact Hero is now going to take into DTs upon seeing that um, there is this quick third here of course the quick third means that you can get some units across and uh, do a lot of damage there and brilliant placement of that Zealot there just putting it inside the mineral line always try and do that if you're under threat from some Zerglings um, it, because it will mean that your uh, the Zealot will have less surface area for the, the Zerglings to attack into. So it's always a great job to do that, and they can get a lot of kills that way. Now, Hero's putting up a couple of extra gates. It's going to take him to three gates in total. Perhaps we'll see a fourth. No, we won't. He's just sort of still keeping it cool as a cucumber right now. He's, there he is. He does take it up to four. So And perhaps even five is on the way as well. But a couple of things poking into the expansion, just keeping his cool again. Again, just making sure those sentries aren't getting too far into the uh, into the unknown there. But it looks as if he does get a fifth gate up. So we are going to go to five gates off the two base. Nice little numbers there. Once the DT tech is out, he'll be in a good spot. Now, the DTs may be spotted by Idra here. Let's have a quick look at Idra's vision just for a moment here. We can see that Idra is just going to miss out on the DTs. I think he's just maybe going to spot it. No, he doesn't. So... Um, he, he probably didn't spot that building there, I don't think. But um, either way, we'll find out what happens because, of course, um, the whole point of this is to see how people react to reactions, I guess. So we'll see what um, the what happens here for Hero. He does warp in a couple of DTs up to the top left-hand side where we have... Uh, sort of the middle left, sorry, where we have a proxy pylon. We got the three DTs moving in. Meanwhile, he's just popping away at these probes, putting down his chrono as every good player does, using up their chrono, which is always a good thing to do. Taking out a couple of links here, he can be seen by the spore crawler that's just up to the side there. And obviously that means that uh, Hydra is well prepared for the DT tech here. He's going to leave a couple of these DTs just floating around. can see a couple of roaches just uh, starting up there from that third base. Now, what's he going to do from here? We'll, we'll see probably a switch into perhaps a few more stalkers as well. There are a couple there as well. Get the mouse out of the way. And uh, just keeping the DTs out of the map. That's one really good thing you can do with your DTs if you are having a bit of trouble. Um, with uh, getting into a base and actually attacking in is actually just use them for map control. They don't need to be sacrificed just to get two drone kills. That's just stupid. So <laughs> don't do that sort of thing. You, you see a lot of lower level players do that and it's just an unfortunate reality that uh, people think that you need to just run them in and kill drones. They don't need to do that. They need to just get a lot of map control. That's a great part of having DTs. Now, just uh, it looks as if Hero was just poking in with a couple of those DTs, as we can see on the minimap. He is actually sending a couple of them just into the main base. Now, that one may get inside. He's not going to focus on that. He's going to focus on getting his macro up and running. One DT at the third has gone down. The one that did, did get inside the bang is doing a lot of damage. He'd taken out one, a drone, and a couple of lings. Not too much damage, not making it worth his while. But uh, it did put a little bit of pressure on Hydra. Now, we can see that uh, Hero has taken the third base down here to the bottom right position. And if Hero moves the camera over there, we'll see it. I'm totally staying off the camera this time. It's a bit easier to focus on what we're talking about. But uh, putting down three gates here to wall off this expansion gets a pylon to finish off that block and a one cannon just behind the wall to make sure that it is a little bit protected. There's a couple of players. Uh, you, you, you can see a difference in how players actually wall off that base sometimes. Sometimes you'll get a uh, like a double pylon block where you put a pylon on the left and the right hand side. But beautiful marker there just while we're talking about that from Hero blocking off some of those links with a great force field on the bottom of the ramp at the watchtower and he was able to snipe off all of those. Again using a DT at the proxy expansion uh, the proxy uh, pylon there while he's getting this base up here. Probably looking to get um, the transfer of the probes going across soon. There it is. He's going to bring them straight across. Beautiful timing there. Pushing three of the probes into one of the uh, assimilators and it looks as if he'll probably have another one in the other assimilator. Meanwhile the DT is harassing a lot here. You can see, you can really see the high uh, the high APM of these players here. Currently with, they're both sitting on around about 185. Now this is before the 1.4 expansion so I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the change to the APM uh, regarding hotkey spamming and that sort of thing is, uh, isn't taken into effect. So these guys sitting quite nicely there on their uh, on their APM. But as we can see, he's getting surrounded there with a couple of uh, uh, infestors up to the top. Hero is in a bit of, bit of trouble there. 
Gets some good force fields down, but does have that pylon to warp, warp in some more units, blinking those stalkers up to the top, saving them for the time being. Meanwhile, just getting a few more, uh, a few more defenses up at the third base while he's just powering around with these stalkers, taking out one of the roaches and another. A few more would be really good there just to make sure this wasn't a total loss of a fight there. Takes out some more of those wings and a couple more roaches, but is going to lose that pylon up on the high ground, which is going to be a little bit annoying, but it looks as if he is switching into a different style of tech now, as we can see, he does have a couple of Templar just coming out now as well. And once he gets Storm up, those will be doing a lot of damage to the Lings on the ground, and of course the Stalkers will be able to finish off any leftover roaches that haven't been barbecued by the Storm. So we'll see what happens here. And Hero looks to be just uh, really, really well focused on his um, macro as we can see here he's doing a great job as we can see in the uh the mineral count here he's currently sitting on just about 600 with about 200 gas he's gonna warp in a couple more units here as well bringing in some more stalkers which will help it help out with fending off these roaches but he has lost vision on the map now this is a bit of a trouble for hero is that he will not be able to see where idra is going to come from but as we can see that uh, pylon that was attempting to go up in the middle is now gone down he's just sort of uh powering away here at the moment just trying to buy some time to get out the uh, the storm tech I don't think it's actually done just yet yes it is actually but he is getting some more energy out from those Templar which are going to be able to help out with uh, defending this imminent attack from Hydra so we're just sort of uh, stuck at the moment waiting to see what hero is going to do we'll just uh, have a quick look around at what he's got he's got a uh, zealot just watching out at this this uh, tower here he can see that there is an overseer just floating around there's another one these guys are just uh, floating around getting what they can done at, but uh, hero is now going to be uh, able to see that the roaches are actually just pushing across that side of the map. But let's go to Hero's view again. We can see that he is looking to put another pylon down in the middle there, sniping out an overseer, and he is just going to push around the map. Probably did see those lings just sweeping through the right-hand side of the map. They're not going to have any way to get into this third base, but he is going to be able to do a little bit of pressure, making sure that Hero is on his toes. And Hero, speaking of which, is going to be uh, just looking at taking that fourth base there. The lings do get surrounded by a stalker donut, and they are going to blast away at those links taking out one of the uh, stalkers but now we are switching into that um the style of uh, hero which has become a, quite a signature of his particular play which is actually getting out quite a lot of war prisms and then using them to harass at multiple points at his opponents now this is something which is obviously going to be a lot more powerful in the 1.4 expect uh, 1.4 patch but we do see that there is an attack here not actually moving around his screen too much this is like uh, purely this is what uh Hero was doing at the time, he looks as if he was doing a little bit of macro whilst that battle was going on, did get uh, some of his stalkers cleaned up by the fungal Z. We do have one of those warp prisms just actually floating around. This, this warp prism has two Templar and two Zealots inside. He's got a secondary one which is going to head across to the other side as well. He's now going to try and drop into the main. Here we go. Puts down the two Zealots to take the damage of the Queen and the uh, spine crawler, but now the Infestors have come inside, putting down some feedback on top of them as well to make sure they are not going to be utilized too well. And then also switching into pylon mode here at the natural expansion. Beautiful micro here from Hero, just putting down a lot of pressure on uh, on Hydra. And as we can see, they're taking out the fifth and the fourth bases as well, just across to the left hand side of the map. He's doing all sorts of damage here to Hydra. Hydra currently sitting at a supply of 198. Of course, we don't technically know that given that we're in Hero's view, but Hero currently is sitting at 125 so he could be does need to be a little bit careful with what's going on does blink away those uh, stalkers just in time to get away from the links a few more units are now warping inside as well we got a couple of templar which can be used to feed back on those uh, infestors which are coming through right about now there they go he's getting good vision on them taking out a couple of those infestors only one of the infestors is, is left with energy there and as we can see, a few more of these are coming inside, so they will be able to put down a couple of fungals. There it goes, and we'll probably see a couple more before the day is done. But now the DTs are also inside. The DTs doing some more damage to these roaches. A couple of the cannons are being taken out as well. It looks as if Hero will clean up this attack for the moment here. He does have Blink, of course, which really helps with just uh, dismantling all of those roaches. And he has deflected that attack for the time being. He's going to resupply his uh, cannon count here at that expansion, making sure that he's defended against any possible attacks that may come in the near future. But uh, interesting to see that Hydra has not checked those uh, Zelnaga watchtowers for any units that could be sitting there. And another, I think that's the third or the, maybe the fourth war prison. I'm not actually sure, but uh, we'll keep an eye on what's going on with that. But um, it looks as if... He is going to go for another attack here. Hydra coming in with a lot more infestors this time. Not able to fungal all of them, but putting uh, 
not able to feed back all of them, I should say, but uh, putting a lot of them down. And then the only few uh, leftover infestors are able to put down some fungals and some infested terrans. Hero doing a great job warping in extra units at the back of the battle and whilst keeping some of his units on top of everything. Now, as you can see, he is uh, just trying to push out now. Two Colossus are out in total, I believe. What are we doing? Oh, we're not on his view. There we go. Nope, there we go. Okay, so he's uh, pulled in a warp prism up to the top base here. Somehow that's just floated right inside. Meanwhile, the Stalker's doing a bit of blinking and taking out those investors that are there. Whopping in more Zealots and DTs up at the third base. This is probably going to be it for Hydra because he has no way of actually stopping this big force that's coming in. He does have a lot of investors, which will help, but there's just so much to deal with. Now pushing inside, keeping on top of his macro there is Hero, of course, putting down some more... Uh, Chrono Boost to make sure he is getting out his units as fast as possible. The Infest is now coming to save the day. Will they be able to? I don't think so. It looks as if uh, they will be falling to that attack. But it looks as if perhaps he may just fend it off. Yeah, the Stalkers have to blink out for the time being. Hero, meanwhile, has got another Warp Prism just sitting out the side of the 5th base there. In fact, sending in a big, big group of Zealots here. These guys have charge, so they will be tearing up all sorts of units that are there. As we can see on the Technology tab, look at that. We actually have Hydra far down. I'm pretty sure that's actually because the Protoss, uh, obviously, you have a lot more buildings which actually count towards that particular tab. Interesting to see, though, but uh, as we can see... Uh, hero does, it, you can just feel it, he does seem to be in really good position, he's denied the 5th base here of Hydra, he's denied uh, the 4th base once and perhaps may get down there again to do that uh, trick again, but now sitting here with a lot of Templar, a couple of Colossus as well, and now some Brute Lords have come into play, so he is going to need something to get rid of those, he does have the Storm of course, the Archons help as well, but uh, the Stalkers will be the main thing that will be pushing away those Brute Lords once they come through, but now it looks as if he is going to try another drops of DTs, did get warped in just in time before that pylon went down and now it looks as if the warp prism with speed do keep in mind that warp prism has the uh the speed boost is actually going to be floating around again it looks as if he's going to send that through the middle of the map somehow there are a couple of corruptors out so this is going to be very dangerous for this warp prism but look how fast that thing is here it goes it's actually just going to run up there hydra catching it beautifully there with a uh with a fungal on top of the warp prism there putting down a couple of the uh infested terrans as well what prism does escape with three HP? It is going to escape somehow. I'm not actually sure how that got out of there. But the DT is now denying the fifth. Another another time he's going to push that uh, fifth base down. This is beautiful work from Hero. You can just really see his multi-pronged attacks, sending in prisms everywhere. As we can see, one prism going into the main now. The DT is trying to take care of the spore crawler, but the problem is that there is a fungal there from that infester. But meanwhile, just pushing against some more zealot uh, zealots here. These are going to be able to take out a lot, a lot of these uh, defenses here inside the main. In fact, he's going to go for the Greater Spire, which is there, which is probably going to signal the GG because that means that there will be no Broodlord tech there for Hydra. But now, coming inside is not going to be able to save the Greater Spire. Loses that, and that is probably going to be it. Uh, Hero now moving inside with this uh, very, very uh, threatening death ball here. Currently sitting on 203 for his upgrades. Got a War Prism here to bring in more units very, very swiftly. Uh, but uh, the Corruptors are going to try and take care of one of the other Prisms. But there is just not enough. Pulling back uh, with the Corruptors. It loses one of the Corruptors to Neural Parasite. But the Infestor that was doing the damage has been taken out. Broodlords in the sky as well doing a lot of damage. The uh, Stalkers are being focused on those Broodlords. And there is the GG. And that was a game from Liquid Hero's perspective. We can see the uh, the various things he got up to there. He obviously had that uh, early expansion there with the very, uh, the Nexus first, which was always good to see against the Zerg. You, you have to really be aware of when you can actually do that or not. Switching into some, uh, some DT pressure there. Unfortunately, it got stopped, but he was able to utilize the DTs for map presence and then also to uh, switch into some Archons later on in the game. So um, just doing a great job with that multi-pronged harass there from Hero. Um, as I said, if you like this sort of little style of uh, doing a first-person uh, commentary for these players, let me know, and uh, I'll do I'll do a few more of them. Perhaps we'll we'll, we'll probably only leave it to the pro players. I don't want to I don't want some you know some bronze players sitting in a, a game and then sort of saying, oh my god, I'm awesome. Look at my APM. Um, but uh, we'll probably stick with the pro players. Um, let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you didn't. And of course, uh, make sure you send in your own replays just for generic casts as well. Cheers.